Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Rivals Live from D&D Celebration 2020. I'm your DM, Tanya DePass, uh, also known as Lisa Storio on Rivals Waterdeep, and your Season 8 DM. So uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun and adventure looking for a cauldron in a bit of icy shenaniganry where our players hopefully will find this cauldron, otherwise it's going to be a very hungry evening for them. And instead of everyone being introduced by me and my attempt at being witty, I'm going to start with Sharif, and then everyone introduce yourself, who you are, and who you are playing. Hey, uh, I'm Sharif Jackson, uh, he, he, him. Uh, I'll be playing Shaka, uh, the, the Tiefling Warlock that I've been playing on Rivals of Waterdeep since the beginning. Super excited. Yeah. Hey there, y'all. Uh, it's Masood Huck, uh, he, him, and I'll be playing Lobiz Stupendi, and we'll learn a little bit more about this Fire Genasi Paladin in just a few moments. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Slani Bailey, and I am playing Mermot, the happy-go-lucky rogue, Tiefling. Oh, hello. My name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard, and today I am playing Gazzini, the um, human... Undead Warlock? Yes, uh, TK, who are you? It's me, TK. I'm very dramatic and very silly. Um, I am playing... Oh, they, them. I am playing uh, the High and Honorable Lord Gilibertus Carax Tannenbaum oh of the Calimport Tannenbaums. <laughs> uh, a, a tiefling uh, Oath of the Crown Paladin. Oh boy. Well, this is going to be an adventure, friends. Um, so, instead of doing, well, we are doing kind of the stereotypical. Uh, Christina, Hi. talk. Hi, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Hi, my name is Christina Ariel, and I will be playing Blake Everflame, who is a, a high elf sorcerer. And I don't know who she is. Let's find out. Yeah, this is going to be fun and interesting. I'm so sorry, Christina. I thought you'd already spoken. I'm already uh, not doing great at this communication thing as a DM. So learn from me. Don't be like me. Um, so now that you know who our party is, we're going to uh, take you to the land of East Haven. And our party, at the start, they were strangers. And they were all traveling to East Haven for some reason. They each had their own reason especially uh shaka he's trying to get back to the rivals but instead he wound up on this vessel with these fine folks but there were terrible winter storms that hit on their way and they got stranded nobody wanted to go to east haven it just kind of was where they wound up and in the time that they were on the vessel from their various ports they've gotten to know each other they swapped stories you know like when you take a cruise and you know the people by the time you get off the cruise, you kind of are friends, maybe, maybe not. And now you're just stuck in this town. You're stuck in East Haven because it's cold, it's icy. Nobody wants to be here. <laughs> but since you're here, you need somewhere to stay and you're all at the Wet Trout. It's a very popular tavern in East Haven. It's got about 750 people or so before your merry group and the vessel you were on wound up there. And to earn more coin until you figure out how to get home, you all are telling stories in the evening around dinner time. People are like, real adventurers. We finally get to talk to real adventurers and and these are fun people that we can get to know because little kids love you. They love hearing these wacky stories. The adults are like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You didn't fight all of these things in Shaka. They're like, yeah, you went to Averna, sure. Right. They don't really believe <laughs> me, but they'll give you a few silver for your stories. So after about a week of this, one of you finds a note slipped under your dinner plate and it's the captain of what would be the vessel that would take people back and forth but she's stuck there too she actually um she slips the note under blake's plate blake you find a note that says after dinner come over to my table for drinks i've got a proposition for your group bring everyone with you so do you all um go well blake first of all do you even share this note uh 
I hope that you will all join me. Apparently, we've been invited to another table for a beverage before we take off for our evening slumber, but mm, I believe that you all should come with me. I think they might have some valuable information. Um, one moment. You're cutting in and out a little bit. Um. Are we back? Yes. Yes. Ah. Huzzah. So, do you mind repeating Huzzah! what happened? <laughs> do you mind re repeating what happened when you found this note slipped under your plate? I found the note slipped under my plate, and I turned to my cohorts, and I asked them if they would accompany me to the next table so that we might find out what information this lovely lady or person or whomever has decided to send over. Are the rest of you going to uh, join Blake in visiting the captain's table? I uh, turn to the rest of the group and go, Yes, hello, friends. Uh, we uh, don't have much else to do, so why not? I mean, I've heard Shaka tell the same story three nights in a row, so might as well hear <laughs> something new at this point. Well, um, I want to add some new stories, so I'm down. Let's 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 go check it out. Let's let's see what's going on. I'll follow Blake anywhere. It's fine. Oh, I love it when you speak so of me, as most people do. Um, Honestly, this works out great for Gil, because Gil's been trying to have dinner with somebody, like, important for probably three or four days, and has been shot down every time, so this is a great in. <laughs> and Gazzini, uh, honestly, couldn't care less. However, he's bored. Uh, he is here for one reason, and if this is a means to an end, then so be it. All right. Um, so once dinner is done with, because you, you know, it's, it's tavern fair, you're kind of done when you're done, but people start to wander in and out. It's cold. A lot of people are basically gathered by the fire. The captain does have a lovely spot near the fire. Her men are about her. And she's made sure to leave space for all of you because she's got a proposition for you. And your captain orders around to make sure everyone has a drink and gestures at you. Come, come, sit, sit. I know you, you're you probably thirsty from all the tall tales you've been telling our, our people. Please join me. Do you, um, do you take her hospitality? Uh, Absolutely, why not? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Gazzini said no words. Okay, so Gazzini's just, he's a strong silent type? Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he's the type of person where if words aren't necessary, don't use them. And, and this seems like a... Um, join us moment, so he's going to join until he needs to say something that's um, relevant. So, all right. Gil will look enthusiastic about the uh, the hospitality, but I'm not sitting in these chairs. They are filthy. So I will allow somebody else to have my seat. Thank you. Uh, Lopez swoops in and immediately sits in that seat. <laughs> like, this wow. one's not being used. Yeah, this feels nice. Very soft. I not warm yet, so I'll get used to it. This is disgusting. Somebody has probably sweat from their nether regions all over the cushion, but that's fine. But that's Ooh. that's the flavor of past, God. We've been talking about this. Don't don't say flavor as though you're actually going to taste it. That would be horrifying. Oh, that would that would be crazy. Yeah, crazy. Ooh. Takes a lick when no one's looking at the seat. Oh. No. Okay. You know what? I, Just for that, give me a confidence check. I felt that. Oh, really? Immediately? Cool. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, you good. licked a nasty... T you licked a nasty bench. You don't know who you sat in it last. You asked me, me a nasty. Check. You asked me to enjoy this man's hospitality, and I couldn't think of anything more than licking... Uh, the captain... <laughs> the captain is a lass, first off. I got a, I got a four plus a five, so that's... A I can't believe you licked a bar stool. That is nasty. <laughs> oh. 
You you like to post. Yeah, that's trifling. Like to post. Yeah. Wow. Uh, nine, you... uh, it, it's in private quarters. <laughs> oh my god! You know what? For that, you you feel unwell the rest of the evening. So if you oh. have any further Constitution checks, you take a disadvantage. Mm, disadvantage. <laughs> just for just for that, you take a disadvantage for licking a bar stool. Perfect. <laughs> Worth it. It wasn't even a I, bet. Uh, right? We'll, right? Get, we'll get into why Lobis does what he does later, but for now, that's all you need to know. <laughs> um, so, Captain Argilath is looking at the bunch of you and maybe reconsidering the offer she's about to make. Um, so, she she takes a drink and then looks at the, at the lot of you. So... Aside from being shipwrecked, well, not shipwrecked, there's just ice sewer. What do you plan to do? You know, are you are you going to try to get back on land? Are you just going to stay here until you hope the ice melts? What are, what are all of you doing here? Because it's been a week. Most people would have tried to flee back home by now. Gazzini, um, his eyes finally go over and i didn't describe anything about this character um first and foremost he is wearing a dark red um almost like a cloak type situation but not really a cloak it goes over his head and kind of goes across his shoulders like a shawl um it is fur lined because we're cold and i'm not freezing for anyone period uh and he's wearing like almost like a shirt that looks like it's made of mesh but not really though it's a little heavier um with this time of year especially because you know again winter um his arms isn't covered that's probably not the smartest thing but it's okay his arms isn't covered however you do see uh black spiral um tattoos going down his arm down to his hands on both sides um but most importantly uh he has a black um uh piece of fabric tied over his face over his eyes he can see through it it's that type of fabric where you can see through but you no one can see through um on the other side um he has that over his face with a nice beard and everything but he kind of takes that off for a second and you see that his eyes are bright red and he looks over at um the captain i am here because the lord that i serve told me to be here that is all and he tells me that something out here is worth knowing so I will do what I must while I am here afterwards, then I shall leave. Very well. well. Hopefully you will find whatever it is your Lord has sent you here for. And she she looks over the rest of the group. Anyone else feel like sharing? Oh, well, uh, my papa's safari through the glaciers hasn't actually, um, a, my, our, our guide hasn't arrived yet, so, uh, I'm kind of just waiting for the, for the glacier safaris to start. I, I don't know wh when they, when they, does anyone actually know? I've been here for a while and I haven't seen anybody who's supposed to be leading me through my glacial safaris. The captain gives you that kind of... Captain. Yes. Yes. And you... Your name is vaguely familiar. Everflame. Why do I know this name? Well, quite honestly, I'd be surprised if you didn't. <laughs> I'm extremely well known. I was once uh, at a place, and whilst I was there, I brought fame and glory to all who encountered me. So, of course, if you have heard of me, then you must be of some great import. Yes. You'll you'll do nicely if you if your group takes this adventure I'm offering. You the the rest of you.
no one else feels like sharing. Really quickly, um, how well known is Blake? Like, it, she just said, like, oh, you should know of me. I've done all these things. Is that true? <laughs> yes. I'm like, I'm like, I'm just wondering if she gets, if, if this is a facade versus. It's <laughs> a quick fact check on that rumor, right? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Why would I mean, no one believe me? <laughs> My background is of such high esteem. <laughs> Look at me. Uh, I can uh, I guess, uh, Lobiz kind of straightens up in his chair. It's like, well, you know, I'm from, uh, Calumport originally. I'm a, a paladin of Ogma, so I thought I'd witness all that nature had to offer. Uh, and so going up to Icewind Dale as a fighter genasi seemed like mighty a challenge. Uh, and yeah, now I've been here listening to Shaka tell the most annoying tales, uh, that are the same every day. And uh, thankfully, finding some joy and merriment from everyone else here. What is it about Shaka? I mean, he tells annoying tales, a... right from the tiefling's mouth. Why do you think they're annoying? Well, uh, well, I'd, I I believe in consistency, right? Like mm -hmm. if something's good and consistent. I can eat the same lunch every day if it's good. You know, I don't need to vary things up. So I have good stories. I will tell them exactly the same way as they happened. And I believe that's the best way. I'm not here to, you know, uh, extrapolate things or make things sound bigger than they were. I will tell the same thing exactly and you will love it. It's a story. There needs to be embellishment. The, the, I don't care that the bear was your exact height. It would be better if it was three times your size. Come on, bud. Like. And I think that, like, yeah. Well, you did lick a bar stool, so I'm not sure how much your uh, variation. I, I don't know how you're gonna tell this story like later to like somebody else. Maybe the bar stool will be three times your height or something. It, it, it will, and I will tell them the distinct notes of hickory and mahogany that are in the wood <laughs> to really bring them into the place of uh, where I was. Captain. Yeah. Before my good compatriots do something, I won't say stupid, but I will say day clay. I would hope that you tell me why it was me that you specifically gave your, your note to. Uh, I'm sure it is because of my skill and talent and written, of course, but what is it that you require? Ah, oh, right to the point, I see. And 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 you, um, the one with the same tails. You're you're one of the rivals, aren't you? That is correct. And I'm looking back to, looking forward to getting back with my crew. Just had to make a little detour. Oh, that's that's quite a detour. It is quite a detour. Well, I, it's a, it's a closer detour than like a Vernus. I'll tell you that. So, uh, good. So you've gone from the frying pan into the deep freeze, then? Oh, okay. I want to, uh... Let's see. Do I, I want to laugh at this joke? Um, you know what? I'm, I'm going to wow. do a fake... I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a fake, like, a fake laugh, but I want to, like... Can I do, like, a performance role? Uh, I, I, I want to yes. act like I am laughing uh, hilariously, but I really don't think it's that funny. But I want to <laughs> get on her good graces. You know, I want to get in the captain's yes. good graces. Please, please give me a performance check. And yeah, first run I... of the night. Yeah. Second, gonna... second, because uh, like Masood. No one remembers the first one. This is this is the first one for sure. All right, that was a ten, so not great. Oh, she knows that you're humoring her entirely. She gets very stone faced, much like Celise does when you annoy her. <laughs> and she's like whether we are doing this sorry go ahead oh go ahead uh Gazzini just watches kind of the antics um not that it matters but he has a passive insight of 18 so he's kind of just reading everybody and kind of for lack of a better word over it and he says whether we are performing or licking things we need to know what you want us to do so if you would indulge us 
Well, to answer Blake's question first, because I'd heard of both her and Shaka, I figured one of you might be good to pass a note to when you'd be pragmatic and practical and want something to do besides hang out in this tavern every night. Besides, the money you earn from it could probably help get you on a ship at a different port that hopefully has not been iced in. So, what I need you to do is twofold. One, some of our fishermen have disappeared. And yes, I know that winter storm probably was a bit foolish to go ice fishing right now, but town still got to eat and the fishermen keep us fed. And believe me, while I'm not a fan of fish every day, it's still better than being hungry. But some of our best fishermen have gone and disappeared. And the other one is more of a, a hope. You see, there's supposed to be a cauldron of plenty, and no matter what you put into it, it always gives forth the most delicious meal, no matter what you put into it. And if we could find this cauldron, it would help us not just break the cycle of endless fish dinners, but give people some variety, give them the spice of life. And frankly, I don't have to hear people complain, especially my crew, about cod and trout again and again and again. So your mission would be twofold. Hopefully find these fishermen well and alive and also find this cauldron. So, if you were to take this mission, what would you want for it? I don't know about anybody else, but I want the cauldron. Endless. <laughs> I would like the cauldron, and of course, we can't get it. That's what we're going for, obviously. But uh, money would be nice. Money would be nice. What I can offer you is 500 gold pieces to split among you if you get the cauldron back. If you merely get the fishermen back, if they're alive, you get 300. And if they're dead, well, 200 gold will have to suffice. Hmm. So you want for us to go save your fishes of men? And then find this cauldron of plenty. Yes. For yourself? For the town, not just for me. So, so you need us to go, and when would you need us to be back? Hmm. So, strangely enough, the citizens have dubbed it the Cauldron Caves, where supposedly both our fishermen have gone, and where this mystical cauldron of plenty is supposed to be. However, to get there, you will need both a dog sled and a boat. A small rowboat, which can manage our canals, but the dog sled has to get you to the boat because nothing's ever easy. I mean, look outside. There's nothing but ice and snow. So will those provide us along with a, a monetary amount to cover any expenses we may inquire upon a trip? journey and know that we have adequate accommodations throughout our sleep that will not be coming out of that 500 payment that we discussed so we will need that we will need the sled as, as well if you could go ahead with those things that would be great i am happy to provide the dog sled to you are any of you familiar with that mode of transportation i am not no I'm assuming they're dogs that slide? No, they're dogs that will pull the sled. Can you provide us a driver? I could, if you really need one, yes. Well, not tag. <laughs> but I once was an expert sled driver myself. Is that so? Really? It 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 is. It I I don't like to to talk about the specifics or any of those things, but I I do believe that I could accommodate us as far as driving is concerned. 
<laughs> I have no reason to disbelieve you. But the DM does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I have like a nine wisdom. So. Uh, <laughs> that was funny. So, uh, um, so, uh, so Blake, so Blake, give me either a deception or a performance. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Tell me what you got. So that is a 15 plus a five. That's a dirty 20. Okay. Oh, nice. all right. In your you face, know, you, are, you truly are the perfect butler. Wow. Okay, with well, a dirty 20, uh, the captain has no reason not to believe you even though she's been a little leery of some of the stories you, she's heard you all say she's definitely like all right then if if you all want to have blake be the driver i have no problem with that or i can provide your driver but please bring the driver back if you don't if you do take one with you i know the no, expression no. on gazini's face oh uh, <laughs> say that again <laughs> I know the expressive face really quick. Oh, he is he he has that one brow just up looking over. Um and as he grins, you see a slight um thicker um uh sharper <laughs> canine. Uh and he says, "Oh dear. Oh no, no. No, no, no. This shall be good. We do not need a driver." All right. Hmm. It's better for the tail, actually, because then we just have to say a nameless driver got us there when we can claim after we do it. You know, this is, yeah, see, Shaka, take notes. <laughs> oh. I, I mean, I want to be alive to get there. Uh, that's the only thing. But if Blake is uh, an expert, uh, you know, I'll uh, be willing to, I'll, I'll be willing to believe her. And I'm by the fee that you were going to pay that driver as well. <laughs> Let, so the, the captain you reimburse goes, me for the miles and <laughs> my car <laughs> while we're on so, the, the topic of fees if if we did have the driver and didn't bring them back would that have come out of the the 300 or the 200 it would come out of anything you earned you can't just leave someone behind in the icy flows that surround our town Right. You can't just leave someone behind. You know, and we're talking about a driver like they're an accessory. You can't take one of the people from my town <laughs> and just person. leave them there. <laughs> Everyone has their, their, um... And then he actually shuts up, because what he was going to say was, <laughs> everyone has their place, and uh, everyone can be sustenance, and he's just going to be like, nope, never mind. Uh, no, not going to go that Gil, far. Gil would have given you a hard high five over that. Would have been like... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, be like, while, yes. <laughs> but while all this banter's going on, the captain has noted that the other tiefling has been very quiet, and she leans over. You... What's your name? I notice you've not said much. Oh, I'm just deserving. I'm Mermot. Nice to meet you. Hello. It's lovely to meet you as well. I wanted to be sure that you got your say in with this, this chatty lot of people. Of course. I'll go anywhere where there's adventure and money. And booze. And food. And in this a cauldron that brings endless food. Yes. Um... Well, good. I just want to make sure that everyone is agreed to go on this little venture. So what I shall do, it is dinner time. So at first light, you when you leave the inn in the morning, you will find a dog sled um, that Blake has offered to drive. You will have a bit of money with you if you wish to shop in the town what, before you leave. Because once you leave the town, there's not much between here and the rowboat. So there's not like a, what is it? you big city folks call it uh not a mall it, there's not a bazaar or a town square we can just go buy things whatever you choose but you can get supplies for your journey and we'll make sure that you have a hot meal before you go and you'll get 50 gold each to hold you and make sure that you come back and bring our sled and our dogs back and if you don't come back we know these places better than you and we'll hunt you down 
Is that clear? I do not understand why you would threaten the ones who are doing you a favor. Or we could let your people starve and we would go home. It wasn't a threat. It was insurance. Valid. And he will lean back. <laughs> um, Look, he understood that. He's like, you're right. You're right on that one. Cause that's how I feel. <laughs> like, like, look, y'all might, she doesn't know, like, as this conversation has happened, she's gotten less and less sure this is a good idea, but she needs somebody to go look for these folks. And you all have said that you're capable adventurers. Yes. So. We're capable. We should, to we be fair, should, Mermot didn't say she was capable. We should right <laughs> away get on the road so that we can rescue the cauldron and the money. Well, and it, the it's people. <laughs> um, so the captain just smiles like, well, it is evening and no one should be out on those icy shores this time of night. So make sure that you've eaten your fill, get a good night's rest, and I'll meet you here for breakfast. You don't have to go right now, just I'm going to make sure you have your provisions, that there are dogs at the ready and rested for you, and a map of where you need to go, which would be Lac Dinesher. That is where you're going to find the boat that you will take to the cave of the cauldrons. Is that enough for you all? Um, has anyone else tried to get this uh, cauldron before? A few people, but they were not up for the job, shall we say. Okay, anything you can warn us about? Anything that happened to them, maybe? Any uh, things we can look out for? Um, ice. Ice that may crack and drop you into your watery, freezing death. Supposedly, there have been sightings of an ice dragon, but it's left our town alone. Oh. And... Oh. Ooh. Yes. Glad I asked. <laughs> no, that's th that's all right. The greater the danger, the greater the glory. Uh, indeed, yes. Uh... Oh. No guts, no glory, they say. <laughs> Come now, you're all no. adventurers. <laughs> of course I am. I once was in the same city as an ice dragon. Did a... Oh. A wild, wild story that I will tell you about, about at night, maybe after we leave Luke Pashire. Uh, I would you... love to hear that. That sounds great. Yeah. Well, you'll have a couple hours on the sled, so you could regale them with that tale, or you could do so after I leave you all for the evening. Either way, I will meet you after sunrise outside the tavern, and hopefully you all not have murdered each other in your sleep. Oh. <laughs> 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 Look at Mermot laughing a beat later. That's, yeah. that's more comfortable. <laughs> it's like, honestly, Gil has been threatened in this way before, and it's pretty common for them, so it's just, ha, huh, yes. Uh, yeah, um, um, Gazzini will, um, stand up and say, well, I do not believe we have anything else to speak of. I will see you all in the morning. And, um, he will head to wherever he needs to go to somewhat go to bed, which he really doesn't do. I mean, you don't <laughs> have to doesn't. go to bed. So you all have rooms, etc. You know, that you've basically made this home for the last week. Mm -hmm. So uh, the captain heads off. She's got to get provisions ready, etc. And she's like writing notes in case they don't bring the sled back. What return to East Haven? And she's <laughs> going to make sure that note is somewhere on the sled. They found. <laughs> Please return to East Haven. Nice. Please burn so, bodies. Return to East Haven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, so you have the evening to yourselves what le is left of it what would you all like to do um it's like a bunch of people in 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 this tavern right yeah i mean it's it's busy it's kind of like imagine like a, a coal mining town or something and it's 
it's after dinner. The people, like, it's the gathering spot before people disperse home, like, before it gets too dark. Mm, it's the Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sure. Why does that sound good right now, though? I'm okay. Okay. I did Waffle House. Waffle House. Waffle House is life. Waffle House is life. If, if, if it's Waffle Back House, I don't. Window. Yeah, I was about to say, if it's Waffle House, I don't want to ask anyone for information. Wow. It's a Waffle wow. House. But can I get a waffle, though? <laughs> um, I wanted to, like, uh, I don't know if I'd roll maybe an investigation, see if I can find someone that looks... I, I basically want to ask somebody else about um, this uh, trip and see if there's anything that we need to worry about. Sure, roll an investigation. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you will find someone that I actually wrote up information for. <laughs> yeah, DM. DM life. Uh, that is a three. <laughs> Oop. <laughs> so there's people in the in the inn. Yeah, there's a lot of people here. Yeah, I'm not there, there's about. people. Cause, Shaka cause... just looks around and just sees us. <laughs> yeah, right. no, I I. I I, I look around, I just see y'all and like who you would see at Waffle House at 4 a.m. <laughs> yes. And just face oh palms God. and uh, that's about it. He uh, can't believe decides not to do what he was going to do. An ice window. <laughs> oh, Waffle House is canon. Please. It's canon. Please do it. Oh my God. <laughs> what? Would it still be Roscoe's though? Yeah. Mm. I like everyone's like, yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> Maybe it's a, Dernan's chicken oh, and waffles. Just thinking about... oh. Maybe oh it's a goodness. Jerry's or a J-Boys. Oh, Jerry's. 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 What? Oh, my goodness. Never mind. I oh. love it. <laughs> um, well, we know that Gazzini has, like, gone off wherever Gazzini lit, lays down, meditates, whatever it is that he does. Um, does anyone else want to investigate, try to talk to other people? What is your evening routine now that you've been here for a week? I'm immediately... Uh, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, Mermot's going to go and, and just ask people about everything and just spill the beans on everything that they're doing. <laughs> hey, we're going to go after this dragon, or we're going to go after this cauldron, and there's, I heard there's a dragon. Can you tell me more about that? And just spill everything. But also try and gain as much information as she can. Okay, um, give me a persuasion check on on someone that you walk up to. Right. Mm. Persuasion. Persuasion is 27. Let's oh, go. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, that's 10, this persuasion. <laughs> so, uh, Mermot has found, you know, like the old brother that sits in the corner and always has his crown royal bag. That's the equivalent that you have just found in the inn that knows everything. And you're like, how long have you lived here? And uh, he's like, oh, don't see many tieflings around here. Where'd you come from? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I got drunk and woke up on a boat, but it happens a lot. So tell me more. What about hey. the ones that went missing? He takes a sip of his crown, whatever the equivalent is in D and D. Missing? Who's missing? What are you? What are you talking about? Who? Wait, hold on. First, you're a young tiefling. How'd you wind up on a boat drunk? You said this happens. Explain this, please. Uh, dock parties are everything, and I go to them a lot. And you get drunk, you black out. You usually wind up on a boat, and then you end up somewhere else. Is that kind of fun? with? Are we adventuring with Kesha? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! Yeah. Um, sorry, I have to get oh my back gosh, to the character. Wake up in the morning and Mermot's still tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> Someone please clip that. Oh my goodness! Um, so he's like. All right, all right. Um, but but missing, what do you mean? Like, nobody... Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me think. He gets another sip to help him remember. There was a couple of youngins, not real youngins, you know, they were like maybe 40, but to, to me, everybody's a youngin. And they got it in their head that they wanted to go down to the caves because they'd heard that there was treasure. And then... 
somebody telling wild tales around the fire one night said, oh, there's not just treasure, there's a dragon. And you know, the junglers, they got excited. They went down and got all their gear on. They got swords on. They thought that they were just so badass and they were gonna go kill this dragon and save everybody. So what had happened was they left, they took a dog sled. They were seen for a couple weeks. And then the dogs come back pulling an empty sled. Not a <laughs> stitch of equipment on it. No food left. These dogs look like they'd been through the ringer, some brambles, through some ice. They, they just look bad for sled dogs. And so when the spring came and everything thawed out, we went looking because we figured something must have happened to them. Did they leave? Did they get on a boat and just keep going? Did the dragon find them? Well, you haven't seen much till you've seen a, something that a dragon has chewed up. It, I don't recommend it. And ever since then, people have stayed away from some of those caves. Now, now the cave that you might be here and tell about, that's the cauldron cave. And I've been hearing wild stories since I was a young boy about this cauldron of plenty that, you know, I don't rightly believe it exists, but if you can find it and if it's real, it'll feed everybody forever. Just got to make something good out of what you put in it. So if that's where they're sending you, Good luck. May whatever you believe in shine on you. And hopefully we don't have to send the dogs out in the spring to look for you. So there are two separate caves or they're the same cave? There are separate caves. There's the cave that those young fellas went after. But the cave that you're hearing about is on the way to the dragon cave. So you have to, so it's like, it's like you take a left at I think it's called Al B. Kirky or something. And then you keep going. <laughs> and then you keep going. Um, and supposedly the dragon is like up, way, way up. You take the left hand path, you go all the way up. And if you find it, if the dragon don't find you first, that's where the treasure is. I thank him for his time. I go back to whoever I can find of our group who's hanging around, and I'll just, I'll just say, uh, we we don't have to go after the fishermen because they're probably dead, but good news. The cauldron's on the way, and it's shorter. Oh, that's delightful. Okay, um, well, uh, you, like, Loba's just been at the bar chatting to people along the side, uh, finishes his drink, and, okay, so there's just, uh, it's easier then, no extra bodies to get back. We don't have to slow our way to return. Um, well, I mean, I've done what I needed to do. I'm rested up. I've loaded my energy, my body. Uh, I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, I'll see you all in the morning. All right. Um, Lobus has just, gone to bed. So. Yes, Blake. Blake is going going to quietly make her way to the stables towards the sound of dog and find someone that works there and just kindly, politely make small talk of a conversation and say, if you, uh, if you were to be going on a mission and you needed to drive a sled with dog dogs, knowing that you had full well done so before, not, what would you do? Like, what methods would you take to start or, or to stop or to do any general directional turns? <laughs> uh, are, are you asking how to be a dog sledder in and they just look around like for a water clock. You mean in about eight hours or so? Was that what you're asking? I, I wouldn't go as far as all of that, but I would say possibly. Well, you see, we have the finest trained sled dogs in all of the 10 towns. 
they are trained to stop, start, left, right in both common, elvish, orc, and sometimes infernal. Now, with the infernal dogs, we think they're mixed with hellhound. We're not 100% sure, but some of them do understand a bit of infernal. So the Any same primordial? direction you give. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. If we do have dogs that understand it, they've never indicated that, nor have we had anyone who wanted to speak primordial to the dogs. Would well, the dogs that I, I am used to driving only respond to primordial. Well, you might be a bit out of luck then. You could try to listen to Infernal. Yes, yes, yes. I've seen dog. I, I've dabbled in all types. I'm sure I can figure it out. I will ask one more question before I head off and away to bed. Yes. Are they trained to to mm, to break by and themselves, stop. or will that be something that I need to guide? I believe if you yell stop or halt. Not complete stop. Why would you... I don't... I... <laughs> Why would they not come to a complete stop? Anyway, off to bed. Thank you and have a lovely <laughs> evening. I appreciate all of your help, even though it was all things that I already know. Good night. You leave a very, very confused steward of the stables of these dogs just going, what in the entire nine hells just happened here? Um, so Blake is off to bed. Um, Guile, Gil, what are you up to? Uh, Gil, um, it, it's hard to describe any of the rooms here in the end as a suite, but Gil tries to get like as close as possible. And once dinner was over, was like, mm, hot bath time. My retainers will take care of all of the necessary information for our quest and has been in his room ever since. All right. Um, I believe, is that- Was he wrong? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, so you all, everyone is off to bed. Mm -hmm. Everyone sleeps well. And even though you feel like it should be dark, should be hard to wake up the next morning because you're off in the hinterlands. When the sun comes up and glints over the ice, it comes in your room and wakes you up for those of you that slept. Hate that. <laughs> well, blackout curtains don't exist yet. <laughs> In spite of all my wealth. <laughs> um, but as you all troop down, you find uh, the captain at her table. There's actually food laid out for you, a nice hot stew and some grits and some sugar and some salt and some butter and some salt hey, pepper. Hey, 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 wow. hey. Wow. Actually, you're gonna say there's some shrimps as well? My God. There's some, or some scrimps as, as some There's some scrimps. <laughs> Are there? <laughs> There'll be oh oil gosh. and hot sauce as well. Shrimp and grits, shrimp and grits. Stop it. You're gonna, I can't get that in Chicago. Stop it. Yo, uh, is there, that's is a there some problem I know bread? Everybody hungry? <laughs> I know. I, we are hungry. Right. It's like eight o'clock at night here, so we're like, mm, food. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's good food, you know, because the captain wants you all to be well fed and, and warm when you head out. Oh, I'm so... immediately concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Gil isn't, but TK is. Look, why would you be concerned, TK? I don't know. You're being so nice to us. <laughs> You will, you will note that uh, Gazzini, if anybody else is like eating, right, but Gazzini will look at the food but does not eat it. You will also note that he didn't eat anything the week he's been here. Oh. Uh, I think Lobez clocks this early 
and it's been like, oh no, you're not eating. Okay, I got you. It's all right. Uh, and has consumed everything that has been put in front of Gazzini. Uh, yeah, at this point, yeah, he definitely lets. He definitely lets. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he probably like starts to just pass his plate over. <laughs> oh, wow. Curse you, Nobis. Those grits are my birthright. My father shall hear of this. I eagerly await your letter from your father as I eat this, and mm, 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 so tasty, Gil, so tasty. Oh. Um, Sh Shock is definitely going to start on his grits, but he's also going to um, look for any sort of uh, dry food, I guess, because he wants to pack some for the trip. So he's looking if, if, if there's anything that I could pack for the trip. Oh, don't worry. The the captain made sure that y'all, when you get out and see the sled, you've got provisions. Here's a pack with dry food and jerky. And, like, the captain's not going to let y'all starve. So enjoy the hot meal. Um, and while, while everyone's eating, the captain pulls out a map. Unfortunately, I can't show you the map because internet. Um, <laughs> they, he shows, duh, she shows you a map of East Haven. And from where you are, you don't have to go very far with the dog sled. If you're walking, it would take you most of the day. Because while it doesn't seem like a big town, between the cold weather, bundling up, moving slow, like in winter, it would take you a good most of the day to go from one side of the town to the other because you'd have to stop, get warm, get food, etc. So um, he shows you a map. She shows you a map and um, shows you a path. Basically, when you leave the inn, you can like take a left, go all to the edge of town, and then go all the way up. Well, it'd be up this way. Um, the way I'm looking at the map is right. So basically, make an L, take an L literally to get where you're going, which is uh, <laughs> Lac Denture. And um, nice start. Start I mean, with L. starting with taking an L, I don't know what to tell you besides <laughs> that. Um, but yes, and it's like at Loch Dinsher, there it's a port. You will find a rowboat that would hold you all. Um, it is, it's a, it's a nice sized boat, so your provisions can go with you. And the edge of the map is the Cauldron Cave. When you get to that cave, it the reason it's called that is one because this cauldron of plenty supposedly exists there. But the, the entrance is weirdly shaped like what you think of a standard cauldron. You know, like the, a witch's cauldron. It's that roundish shape to enter the, the caves. So once you're in the boat, it should be fairly quick. Um, I think while they are nomming or scramping grits, um, Gazzini would um, kind of look over at the map as well, kind of steady it. Um, but then look over at uh, Blake, uh, hopefully mid-bite, like, and you can get us there with your um, knowledge of dog sledding. Yes? Not one to brag, but I did a, a crash course once upon a time, very far, far in the past, and I learned everything that I need to know. Did you know that the dogs are actually trained to and to stop. You took a crash course. I hope that the crashing part wasn't the only thing you learned. <laughs> because this crash is a bit the old time. <laughs> 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 all day. Ha 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 ha. Um, how are the... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm just saying that we're pet. Them some good grits. Everybody, uh, it's quiet when they <laughs> eat. Quiet. Hey, hey, it's quiet. <laughs> right, we 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 just tearing it up, uh, tearing it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Gil was definitely uh, nodding along to everything that Blake was saying. Just like, yes, this makes sense. Oh, the dogs stop and start. Fascinating. <sighs> the Mermot best butler. Is... Mermot is daydreaming about a cauldron of endless grit. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, culture of grits. 
I mean, endless. So, um, you all, I'm assuming, or tell me if you have, you have your breakfast without incident. Is anyone doing or saying anything weird or that, I, I should say, weird to each other, weird to someone else observing you that doesn't know you? Uh, or... you see Lobus stand up and like, just pocket like six biscuits. Um, and it's like, well, That's okay. Right. Yes, all right. I think we're good to go now, right? You're, yes. you're all are good. Yeah. Yeah. Should I should I take my cold weather silks or my traveling silks? Your I will pack both silks. Oh. <laughs> well, you could pack both, but this would be interesting. Uh, uh, Gil has also like takes two like different capes out and is like the gold with the ermine trim, or the silver with the ermine trim? Yes. Okay, but there is... <laughs> would it change your mind to know that there is either a wine or a brilliant red velvet lining? No. <laughs> the captain's about utility. You know, and... all of those colors are nice. The colors are... No, no, go ahead, no, go ahead. It was just a, a random thing. <laughs> um, so the the captain is, like, looking at all of you and then looking at Gil, like, you're going to be cold. You should dress for the weather. This isn't a fashion show, you realize. You're going into a cave. And everyone will be very impressed by me. You mean the people you're already with, mm -hmm. unless you mean the fishermen. Oh, they're already, I pay them well. They're already very impressed by me, but uh, sure, if the fishermen are, it doesn't matter. I'll take the gold. It's already clasping the gold with the ermine and the wine velvet on the inside around the fine. I'll take the gold. <laughs> wow. Uh, so you all, you all buy your plates, had your pouch of 50 gold, your... That is your retainer fee, shall we say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the captain the captain knows how to take care of you. I can um the buy captain so buys many capes. <laughs> um the the captain, who is like a an older dark skinned human woman, um short locks pulled back in a bun. She's like, Are are you all y'all y'all you ready to go? Yeah, we're ready. What the Marmot's taking a bowl of grits to go. Yes, that's that's actually very smart. Uh, copies. <laughs> and the uh, captain's just Gazzini, like, how's this gonna work? Gazzini's already walking towards the door. He can tell that um, perhaps he and Shaka are are going to be even Kalani a little bit. Kalani, wow, even Marmot a little bit. Uh, uh, but uh, it's gonna be a very extra time. So he is just going to uh, start that path uh, onto this dog sled area. Uh, and yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I do want to turn uh, Blake and say, Blake, why don't you demonstrate for the captain um, your, uh, your mastery of the sled? Why don't you give a little, a, a little demonstration just so the captain can be comfortable? Oh, yes. Uh, regardless of the last time you were behind uh, the reins. It takes a lot of energy out of me before I drive to tell stories of my adventures. I try to save them for the road. I settle in like a child for a bedtime story. <laughs> <laughs> it was a dark and stormy Wednesday. Here we go. All right, yes. Eddie Shaka, that's how you start the story. Oh my goodness. The thunder howled, uh, much like the dogs, and I had were warm as I created fire bolts to keep them warm. Doing my little cantrip, so that way I can do this. It's not an exaggeration if you can get away with it because it's in your rules. Ah, oh, yes, good times. So after yeah, well, after I feel comfortable. Like, um. <laughs> The captain at this point is kind of looking up at the sky like, okay, you all have wasted a good chunk of the day. 
Like <laughs> we got we got time to be somewhere. Uh, even though there's no such thing as a, a where -bitch. the captain still does the annoy tapping a gauntlet. <laughs> um, I I suggest that you go before someone thinks the dogs are are for hire and takes your sled because they are the main mode of transport of the town. Good luck. May Tear watch over you or whoever it is that you may or may not believe in. And we'll be here. Hopefully you come back with our fishermen in the cauldron. Have no fear. So, yeah. Ready um, Blake, I want you to RP your attempt to get sled going. I will say really quickly, once we get to the um the dog sled, um uh Gazzini would have um walked to Blake and put a hand on uh the shoulder and said, You know, I believe in you. Let's see exactly what you can do. And as I'm speaking, you see the veins in my arm start to pulse and that pulsing goes down my hand and goes to the shoulder and the um the veins and uh and 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 veinage in their shoulder will also post as well, just once as I cast guidance on them. All right. Blake, uh, I want you to role play getting the group on the road and uh, let's see what happens. I'm not going to make you roll, but I just want to hear what happens. Friends, gather up. And everyone secure your have we procured everyone's luggage traveling items <laughs> <laughs> and I want to go and I will expertly stroll the items to the back of the sled creating little squares of seats to sit on and I will arrange them in layered little tiers ciphers of tiers if you will Ooh! Wow! And, and I Ooh. will make a seat for each person to sit, and then I will <clears throat> on front one, on back one, on side ones, on right ones, and away! Oh, shoot! I call shotgun. <laughs> I think it's important to note that all of Gil's luggage is just armor. There, there are two weapons that they use. Their shield, ton of capes, zero preservations <laughs> or food. Um, they, they trusted <laughs> their retainers to take care of like loading all the food and stuff that they would need. Um, and they did toss off a little bit of luggage just to make sure they got enough capes on. How, are these are these capes in like? Like, are they in steamer trunks? Are they like in like a suit bag? Like you just have them like open to the wind? Like I'm, I'm just trying to get a picture for me. Oh, what's no, slapping they're... me in the face as I'm riding on this, this sled? <laughs> uh, hopefully nothing. They're they're in an an engraved ebon vest. Okay. Oh. I would just like to point out that it's flying anywhere because we haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just. Yeah, I. I... I just figured there were a bunch of capes wrapped in a larger cape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Three small you capes are... and a big cape. Yeah. You are yeah, bubbling with Lando Calrissian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Or All right, a vampire. Blake. I don't know. <laughs> um, Blake them away. And now I'm so inspired. Oh, it reminds me of that one Wednesday. <laughs> we take off. <laughs> one um, so you've hit that perfect time of day to run errands and basically there's not a lot of people on the street also hold where you are in East Haven and you follow the captain's instructions you get to the to the port and find this long boat but however it's not going to take all of the luggage that Gil thought would be needed it is an expedition, not a fashion show. So Gil, uh, you have to leave your extraneous items be behind. Ooh. No. These are necessary. 
Essential capes. You can leave can them at the just... dock. Oh, isn't? Uh, yes. Is there? Can I take one cape? Aren't you wearing a cape? Yes, but I got bored of it earlier, and I just tossed it back to Lobiz <laughs> to put in with the rest of my things. It's around my neck now. <laughs> oh, what a nice like gift! Oh, and... oh, oh no! God. Yeah, I just I want I want to take out just like a fully like polar bear fur cape, and I and then everything else. I'm done with the capes. They will remain here with the peasant. So that's it, I guess. <gasps> Okay. Wow, just the peasant. Can I attempt to slide a hand. Sorry. Can I'm about gonna... to just slide a hand one cape out of there before she closes it? Sure, give me a slide of a hand. It. Oh, yes. Because there's so many hand. pretty capes. Uh, that will be a 16. You managed to get a cape barely before it closes, but it's not like... It's an okay cape for the weather. I mean, it's high quality because of Gil, but it's it's like when you ran out in the morning and it was warm, and then by like 5 p.m., you're like, I hate life because the weather has turned against me and I'm in this windbreaker. So okay. you got a cape, but it's not like a, a warm, it's not a winter cape. But yeah, it's a flap in the wind. Sure. You are all very <laughs> stylish. So imagine yeah, if you it's will... a, it's like three fourth. <laughs> yes. So imagine if you will, Blake at the helm of this dog sled, thankfully guided by Gazzini and that spell. Otherwise, y'all will be in a lot of trouble right now. You wouldn't even get to the cave because I can just see you all turning a corner and just everyone flying off of the sled. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine there's there's three capes now amongst you. And Blake is somehow duck capes that are almost going to fly in her face. And the dogs are just go forward. They kind of know where you want to go because the groom figured that Blake really didn't know what they were doing and gave the dogs instructions. But there's just like some of you are like, ah, cape, I can't see. And by the time you get there, poor Shaka has a cape dangling off a horn. Oh, no. <laughs> um... Mermot is very fashionable, but a little chilled in the cape that they have nicked from Gil. Gil looks very regal, or so they think they look very regal, but really, you just look like you're overdressed for a casual frat party. Um, That's okay. I'm easy to impress. <laughs> and, um, and Blake, tell me how you end this dog sled ride, since you had to ask about that at the groomer. I try to do a compatriots and I watch. This is an old skill I learned a very long time ago that I've become quite proficient at. Stop! As she does that, you're going to see my eyes flare as the sound of a dragon um, um, roaring, for lack of a better word, comes from close to where the entrance of the cave is as I cast Domiturgy. Just to freak out the dogs, just to see what happens. Mm. <laughs> okay. Mermot hides. Instantly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lobez ducks behind a rock at the moment that happens. <laughs> like, jumps off the, the sled and is, is crouching. What? Okay, um... Okay, uh, so how many adventures have we actually all really been on? Because I'll be real, zero is, is my number. Um, I'm just kind of, uh, I'm more or less recorded stories, and this is uh, a little scary for me now. What do the rest of you do? Uh, Shaka gets at the ready. I mean, like, he's dealt with dragons before. You know? <laughs> Shaka's <laughs> like, I got you. You know, he, he, you know, he, he's, uh, he's, uh, I mean, he, he's, He's not happy about it, you know what I'm saying? But but you know he's he, he just at the ready a little bit. Okay, as, then. as he moves that uh, cape off 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 of his horn. Um, Please don't snag it. I shall not. Thank you. That was a really dramatic. <laughs> it was. 
<laughs> Gil is a very Gil's a very dramatic boy. Gil has been in several adventures, but unbeknownst to Gil, almost all of them are arranged by his father. Um, so it's oh, kind of no. it's very much rich dentist on a safari, but Gil thinks that he is ready, and I'm level nine and I'm ready. So Gil's <laughs> got that that shield out, got the scimitar out, is ready. It's just what ho. Fair. You just you, you just right. hear Gazzini start to just it's not really a giggle, but it's like a <laughs> You all so. care about capes and and your need to look good. Well seems like you all are actually prepared. Um that was me. Let's hope we don't actually deal with a dragon, yes? Ah and a jest. Oh. Oh, so funny! I definitely don't need to pack a different pair of pants. Okay, that's that's funny. It's all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Body jokes are so funny to me. <laughs> I'm 14. <laughs> uh, I'm going to roll and see what happened to the, the dogs. Don't know all the things oh, no. that you just said, and you just oh, scared those the poor puppers. Dogs. Are the dogs cute? Oh, the dogs are very cute. They're they're basically husky. Oh, thank goodness. Um, oh, I'm so glad they're not ugly. I care about them now. Well, I mean, they wow. might run away at the sight of a dragon or hearing a dragon. Wow. Disadvantage on all charisma checks for the dogs. <laughs> no, no Harsh but wow. fair. Fair but earned. Wow. Look, ism. <laughs> Um, so because my extra life DT was kind to the doggos, they cower a little bit, and then when they realize there's no actual danger, they they stand up and then they all kind of like look around and then they just sit because they've been like no one is making them go and they just feel like everyone stopped moving. So they're just like, okay, no one else is moving. Um, and they just sit and wait for a command. Oh, nice dogs. How far away is the, uh, is the cave from us? Uh, if it wasn't foggy, you could almost see the cave. But the boat that you see that hopefully some of you are going to actually start getting in, um, <laughs> it's like 20 minutes brisk rowing, if that. Okay. Uh, yeah, Gazzini will still chuckle as he gets out of the boat and, and gets out of the gets off the sled and goes to the boat. Got to get to this cave. Hmm. <laughs> yes, is everyone following suit? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um. Marmot pets the dogs as she as she passes. Bye bye puppies. They give you a friendly woof as you all go by. And uh, they're well trained. And if you don't return by evening, they may they may return back to town because they still need to eat, but they are well trained and they know how to get back to the stable. Um, so you, you get on the boat and luck is with you, mostly because the clock is running out, that you get to the cave, um, you get to the cave and when you get to the mouth of it, you see, you see in person, it looks like someone intentionally almost carved the opening balls into the shape of a cauldron. And that probably took magic or a lot of ingenuity and engineering, but it looks like you're sailing into what could be a cauldron. You don't know. We are sailing like, into the unknown. Basically. Um, <laughs> so... You get inside and there's a little like beached area. You see, you feel it you know, like when boats are getting near the shore, you, you feel and hear the scrape of the boat on the bottom. Yeah. And you can pull ashore. And what you see is a cavern with sconces. And the weird thing is, for those of you that may be sensitive to magic, you feel something here. It's not good or evil, but there is definitely a magical presence in the cave. And as you all get out of the boat, you get your supplies. As you walk forward, the sconces light on their own. Oh, okay. no, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. 
<laughs> it's too late. You're there now. You are there uh, now. Once Gazidi sees this and starts to feel what he feels, he kind of nods. And again, I see the veins um, on his arms and some of them's legs, even in his neck, you start to see them pulse. But as they pulse, you hear like a doo doom, doo doom, doo doom. And as that happens, you see like very small waves of magic coming off of him as he casts Mage Armor at will. Nice. Okay. Hmm. You are, you're all set. So uh, Gil makes. I once had. Yeah, Gil makes the assumption that Gazzini is making the sconces light. Okay, fair. <laughs> fair. Not a thing. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> We've been bamboozled before. <laughs> True. You know, I once had a sconce, and believe me, when I tell you, all you had to go and say clap on, and oh. the flame was immediately <laughs> on. It was the most fantastic thing you've ever seen. You've never seen anything like it. I have, of course. But you've never seen You know, you've told some tall tales. That one may be the tallest. I don't know about that one. That seems unreasonable. Clap on, clap off, I promise, I swear. It, it, it just hasn't made it to where you're from. <laughs> this new magic, this this magic has not made it to where you are currently. <laughs> the, the DM yeah, can seem... tell you. The DM can tell you it's magic. Uh, so question. <laughs> so basically you are presented with going straight forward or a little bit to the right. Which um, would you prefer? Uh, I'd love to make like an investigation check just to like see if there's any other footprints or like any other. Yeah. 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 Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone wants to uh, investigation? Gil, I gotta, Gil is. A... Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. It was a was... joke. No, okay. Please, don't let me interrupt your bits. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Gil is a little tired and is resting against the cave. Uh, I trust you to do this work for me. Uh, does a 14 wow. do the work for Gil? Um, let me see. You got a 14. Would anyone else roll a check? Uh, I think good, good, anyone I will roll one. Through, oh, sorry. Um... I was saying, uh, Gazzini would be looking around, not necessarily trying to investigate any, like, um, pieces on the ground, but, like, is he hearing anything? Like, what's around? Like, what sounds like? Is anything coming from the first one versus to the right? Like, he's just trying to ascertain that, but... Okay, and you got a... And Gazzini got a what? Uh, uh, this is not good. Uh, this oh, would have been perception. You... Uh, I, a, I wrote a six, but it's a ten. Not the best. Uh, so that's that's a 10 perception. Okay, and Shaka got a 24, you said? Yeah, 24. Okay, um, anyone else take a roll? Mermot's not smart enough to investigate anything, so she just spins a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It points right. Just spin it around. Okay, uh, Blake, are you doing anything? Blake at the moment is just overly pleased with her, just thinking of how amazing a job she did all by herself completely alone to drive horses. Ah, uh, all right. All right. So your 10 perception got you the knowledge that you're in a cave. There's, there's Valid. more sconces <laughs> that one of them lights as you get closer while you're investigating. But Shaka, you, you notice that the magical sensation is much, much stronger as you go toward the right, but you also notice what looks to be broken fishing boats. Right. You know, kind of how you all pulled ashore. Mm. There are fishing yeah. boats that also pulled ashore, but did not make such a clean landing. And as you, as you notice them, you do unfortunately find the bodies of the fishermen frozen solid. Ooh. Ooh. Think I found something here, everyone. The fishermen, they are definitely uh, frozen. Technically, this isn't our fault. We should still get 300 gold for this, right? Like, this isn't well, our fault. Well, I'm not carrying back a frozen. You worry about some frozen fishermen? All right. Well, no, but. I mean, we still get some gold. 
fault for bringing it. Remember, there was. Yes, but that's a that's an entire one hundred gold. Whatever, that's fine. Uh, maybe I mean they might not be dead. Who knows? Maybe it's magic ice. Um, I cast <laughs> reduce flame, uh, and I like kind of run my hand over one of them to see if I could like get some facial features, like thaw them a little bit. I would like to poke one with a stick. <laughs> I would like to take the side of the other gentleman and gently my fire bolt and trip to see if I can draw defrost the ice. Look, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in order, Blake is trying to use fire cantrip. Gil is poking, or I'm sorry, Vermont, you said you're poking someone with a stick or Gil? It's me. Gil. So to be fair, Marmot would probably poke, poke too with a dagger. We can both. So there's plenty of dead person for poking. <laughs> okay. Uh, fine, I'll get my own dead person. She moves over to another body. <laughs> they might not be dead. They might not be dead. They might just be block of ice. Let's let let me. See. They're dead. I think they're dead. Oh my god, what do I do with you all? <laughs> so I think we should keep moving. So hold on, no people. So they took actions. So, Blake, your cantrip. Um, roll as if you were attacking an edge or a spell. Oh, no. Yes. We about to fry some some, some zombies or something. <laughs> you know... I'm not, going to be, I'm not going to be hit by this firebolt, am I? I just want to be very clear. <laughs> I don't know how close are you standing to this person. I am the I'm best with Firebolt in my academy, so I would not be <laughs> surprised if absolutely perfectly. That's a 21. All right. So to everyone's shock and surprise and awe, you see Blake doing their Firebolt cantrip, and they managed to actually saw out this person oh, that okay. they that they have bestowed this fire upon. I am. <laughs> Is my cape? <laughs> I, I I don't think Blake was wearing one of your capes. Oh, I, I think your cape is okay. Oh, thank um, you. Some of us have taste. <laughs> well, that was a burn that didn't need a hole. <laughs> uh, you know, that was a crit, that was a crit burn. I'm just gonna let you have that one, TK. Or, I'm sorry, Christina. I'm just ah. gonna go ahead and give out 10 psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> and TK has left the building. Um, God. <laughs> So, Blake, you have successfully thawed out this fisher, this fisherman, who, like, as they as they start to defrost, which is not a thing I thought I'd ever say running a game, they start shivering uncontrollably, and, like, their eyes kind of barely open, and they just stare at you, and they're like, who, 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 who are you, who are you, where are, where are we, who are you? The words you're Looking, thank you for saving my life. And this poor fr former fish stick frozen fisherman is like shivering and his chat, his teeth are chattering. <laughs> hag, hag, hag did this. Hag, hag, don't hag. And they're like struggling to, to speak in whole sentences. Forget your my, thanks for saving me. I, th I take my cape off and uh, wrap it around the individual. Um, okay, now, bud, you're fine. You're safe. It's all right. Um, just, what's your name? You're okay now. We'll get you home after we get a cauldron out. You'll go home, eat plenty of stew, huh? Um, and you feel like like a hand, like you feel like a, because they're still shivering, you're just like, no, 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 no call. No call, no cauldron, Ca bad, bad, cauldron, bad. And they just like keep shivering. Um, and one person is shivering like as they have been defrosted. 
Who else was trying to defrost one of the fishermen? That was originally. Yeah, I produced the uh, produce. I did produce flame. Um, are you going to try one of the other? Uh, what you think is a body, or are you going to um, try to get this person to to give you information? Um, I think I'll try to, uh, another body. Actually, especially after seeing that it worked, I definitely want to try it on another body. Okay. Um, give me your, um, well, give me the roll for the spell and then add your, add your, um, spell attack. That's basically going to be your modifier. Uh, cool. Uh, I got a 15. Um, you, you defrost them a little bit. But you're not as effective. They only they only get defrosted like kind of to their collarbone, and they they are not really defrosted enough to speak or anything. So they unless you want to try again or someone else wants to try, or, um, if anyone wants to take the time to build a fire, which out of character the GM does not recommend, uh, you're not getting anything out of this person. So. Can Murmok make an intelligence check to see if she would know what a hag is? Sure. Um, By the beat way, a 15. She has, she's has like one to intelligence, so it's not much. That's not going to work. That's an eight. Hag don't know. Uh, hearing hag, um, Gazzini is no longer focused on, well, to be fair, he was never focused on him, but he's not looking at the, the, um, now thawed fishers of men. Um, he wants to see where he can find this hag because they are useless until we, we might have to deal with this thing versus getting them up. Okay. Um, Shaka, were you going to try something as well or... Um, no, I mean, if, if, if the person is, it doesn't seem like they're going to give us any information about the hag. Um, so I, well, I do know I've fought hags in the past, but I don't know if I could get that information from this person. So I just want to, um, pursue with the knowledge that a hag might come. But, uh, I turn to the group and I ask them, it's like, so I've heard some stories about hags and, and I, I don't really know much about them, but... I did. I was thinking about it. Hag, when you spell it backwards, is ga. Is that anything? Does that help us at all? You make no. me want to stab you. Okay. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying. Okay. I'm doing my best. No, that's not useful information at all at this venture. Yeah. Um, uh, Gil just pats Lobus on the shoulders, just like, look, you. You gave it a good shot, and honestly, like when you think about it, these, they're much creepier now that I know they're alive. Why don't we just stand over here and let them do the hard work? Let, come on, okay, buddy, let's go. Okay, all right. Get your, get your pocket grits and we'll just, we'll let them figure it out. <laughs> no, I, I've got pocket, uh, pocket biscuits. Can I get another cape? I gave it mine to that peasant over there. No, that, oh! Wow. My... Wow. I once knew a classism. Gah. Plus, wow. Gazzini is walking away. He cannot <laughs> handle. Gazzini just walks into the frozen lake. <laughs> just, like, we. And it's like, sinks to the bottom. It's like in falling down. He's just walking. Um, <laughs> no, he is going into the cave, though, because he's like, this is not helpful. All right. So are you all going to follow Gazzini? Yeah, I'll oh, follow. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'll follow. Yeah. I'll follow. All right. Oh, God. Try to so... say Gah, Zini, and I'm not going to have <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm not going to no. have it. Please no. Um, so as you all follow Gazzini, you hear a terrible laughter. And as you enter, the sconces on each side of the wall light to show you a hideous visage of what at some point may have been a beautiful woman or may as well have been this horrific creature you see before you. It's got bluish skin and there's tufts of cold air around it. 
even though it is standing in front of a cauldron, it looks up at you and just smiles. Ah, my next course. Usually I have to go find them. They rarely come to me. Roll initiative. What? Oh. Well, okay. <laughs> well, this is somehow Gazzini's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, uh, plus seven. Seventeen. Initiative. Sixteen. Okay, hold on. Shaka, seventeen. Uh, yep. Go to sixteen. Shaka, seventeen. Uh, Lobes. Okay. Uh, Nuts. Okay. Thank you for rolling in yep. order. Now I don't have to rewrite it. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> That's funny. What did you get? Uh, uh, Twelve. Okay. Gil? A 22. Oh, wow. I have the alert feet. Ooh, nice. nice. And Gazzini. I swear this is just perfect. My first roll of the night with my gut dice is a natural 20. Hey! Right. <laughs> for a 23. <laughs> right. And I'm going to roll for the hag. The hag has a 12. Uh, Blake, what is your wisdom? 13. Okay, let me see. Uh, you beat out the hag, so the hag goes absolutely last. Nice. All right, uh, Gazzini, you're up. Uh, Gazzini says, you will not be eating us today. As a matter of fact, my lord wanted a piece of you. Nakulani, and as I say that, I will hex her, and immediately um, rush forward. Uh, that's my bonus action. Um, and as I rush forward, you see the um, the tattoos on my uh, arm begin to glow. And as the spiral glows down my hand, once it gets to my hand, I flourish, and a scimitar appears as I am a pact of the blade warlock, and I'm going to take two attacks. Uh, All right. Uh, yes, that is what I'm going to do. Um, All right. Uh, uh, roll them. And my apologies, I did not hex her. However, um, you do see. Um, I, I, I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, uh, however, I did use a bonus action and. Um, all the veins in my in my in my body just get a little uh, stronger, and the eyes glow red as I use my form of dread. Um, boo, that might not hit though. Uh, maybe. Uh, oh no no no. Let's say uh uh, uh dirty twenty. So, All right. That, okay. And what's your second attack? Uh, second attack is fifteen. Uh, Those actually both hit. Oh, success! So, uh, with my form of dread, um, I can uh, uh, turn any damage I do into necrotic instead and roll one additional damage die. So this is actually going to be in total 46. Uh, uh, 19 plus 8. 27 points of uh, necrotic damage. Whoa. Okay, you uh, you put a hurt on the hag, definitely. Uh, and she needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, what's the DC? Sixteen. Wow, I wish I could show you this because this is a green die, and I don't oh. have a green screen. It is a nat one. I have crit failed for the wow. hag. Oh no! Uh, if she can be, she is frightened of me until the end of my next turn. Um, that is a possibility because she did fail. That one's a fail. So uh, next up is Gil. Oh, I need to add one more dice because I get sneak attack because I'm part rogue. <laughs> well, no, it's she's already one. seen you. But she's seen oh, you. you. No, you're, no you're, correct, you're correct. You're correct. You're uh, correct. I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. Never yeah, mind. You walk I have in also... her house. <laughs> I'm, I was, I've been playing Buckler Rogue, so like I'm used to be like, nah. Never mind. Nope. <laughs> yeah, no, that wasn't. Because she was like, oh, y'all here for dinner? Hold on. Let me do you. So, uh, Gil, yeah, you're next. Gil, what you doing? Yes! Uh, Gil is going to um, 
at first Gil like squares up and then seeing that Gazzini's kind of like running in, it's like, hmm, I know exactly what'll even the odds of this fight with this nefarious tag and carrot guardians. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, and so, um, a, a ring of more gills, each in different colored capes, appear with their own <laughs> oh scimitars God. to... Okay? <laughs> to attack this hag. Your spirit guardians are just you and your different capes. Oh. Yes, they are! They're it. the only... These are the only ones that I trust with my life. Thank you. Do these spirit guardians do damage? Uh, yeah, they should. I'm sorry. Let me read this real quick. When you <laughs> when you cast the spell, they <laughs> can designate any number of creatures uh, to be unaffected by it. That's all of my companions slash retainers. If you work for me, you're safe. Um, wow. <laughs> decide now what that means. Uh, creature engines aura. Okay, so the aura, uh, I put it um, 15 feet away. I put it where the hag is. Um... I need I need for the hag to make a wisdom saving throw. Well, I'm not using that dice anymore. My my Animal Crossing die has failed me. <gasps> no. Uh, the or has it has... or has it helped us? Or has it helped us? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that got a ten. Okay, so um, she failed, so she's gonna take three d eight radiant damage. Uh, let me one, Ooh. two, three. That is eighteen radiant damage. Um, yeah, and uh, and then Gil um, still takes what Gil would call a defensive position, but really just kind of covers the face a little bit, just sort of a, a not the face mantra, and um, yeah, and uh, hangs back to to protect uh, his allies. And, uh, and I relinquish control. I never get to say it in my other game, so I'm gonna <laughs> do it now. <laughs> All right, well, the hag, the hag who thought that she was gonna like, uh, like have some nice fresh meat, fresh adventure that wandered in her, her lair is, is like, she's like leaned over like, this is not how I thought my evening would go. I was, I was just, mm. yeah. So she doesn't even get to give you a smart answer uh, before Shaka is up next. All right. Uh, so, uh, you know, Shaka's fought some hags. He is uh, uh, looking to end this as quickly as possible because um, he knows how dangerous they can be. Um, so he is going to cast... Uh, a wall of light. Uh, and what does that do? And you have to make a con save. So, um, so it uh, makes a shimmering wall of bright light. Um, and and if the uh, creature fails to save, they take four d eight radiant damage and is blinded. Uh, for oh minutes. my god. Okay. What after? So, so, so it's a con save of sixteen. The die have not been kind to the DM today. Um, I'm up there too. Do I need to make a con save? Uh, I Here? can. No, I can put it to where it doesn't hit you. Okay. Unless, um, sh- unless you're like hugging the hag or something. <laughs> what you said, 16 to beat? Yeah, 16. She missed by one. Literally okay. by one point. All right. Her stats. All right. So, yeah. Okay, so then I'll roll with uh, these D8s. I uh, should have had these ready. How dare you? Mm-hmm. You have D&D Beyond right there. I do. Uh, <laughs> all right, so that is 28 points of damage uh, and blind Ooh. for one minute. Wolf. So... The hag stumbles away from the cauldron and is screeching and she's just doing this. And she's she's hurting. There's like blackish red blood coming from these wounds you all have inflicted. Uh, Lobez, what are you doing? Uh, so I see um, folks are sort of rushing in. He says, all right, 
sideline time is over. It's time to get in there. Uh, and he <laughs> rushes forward and um, says, Hag, I, I bet you're not even a good cook. Prove it. And I will cast Compelled Duel on okay. the Hag. Um, what does that do? The Compelled so Duel. <clears throat> you attempt to, to compel a creature into a duel. One creature that you can see within range must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, that creature is drawn to you, compelled by your divine demand. Um, for the for the duration, is disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures other than me. Um, and oh. must make a wisdom saving throw if it moves to a space other than 30 feet away. So it doesn't have to attack me, but if it attacks anything else, it'll just okay. get disadvantage. Um, and All right. so, so what do I have to beat? Yeah, but I... you have to beat uh, a wisdom save of 15. Okay. Oh my God, these dice do not like me. Um, <laughs> even with her bonus, she nine. Mm. So do your worst. Man, uh, yeah, I well, I, 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 I cast a spell, so I can't really do more than that. Uh, and now I'm just okay. gonna, I'm, well, I'm gonna hit it twice and see how well I do. Uh, okay. First one is a 14. Does that hit? No. Cool. And then the second one is a nat one. I don't know hit. Okay. Oh, you got a nat one. How did yeah. you fail this attack? We need to know. Uh, so it's like he's twirling his blade. He's got his shield up. It's like, okay, you know, it's just an easy story. Ha! And uh, it goes to swing, and uh, she just moves slightly because her hands are covered by the eyes, so she doesn't even know that I'm there. Uh, and I, like, chip my sword on a, a stalagmite on the ground. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was that was a fail. Uh, Mermot, <laughs> it is uh, your Mermot turn. will whip out her beautiful gold rapier that uh, has been bedazzled with glued on fake gems and she will uh, launch herself forward and attempt to stab that is um 20 you absolutely hit the egg <laughs> and remember she's blinded oh. so ooh is that advantage yes on your on your on your damage. Yes. All right. So let's see. Rapier, rapier, rapier. That is that is two plus my sneak attack. That is nineteen points of damage. Wow. Yeah. So Bye. you all you all see Mermot do this very graceful kind of lunge toward the hag who's stumbling around in agony and bleeding from various wounds and whatnot. Sir Mermot, to steal a phrase from our friend Matt, how do you want to do this? Well, I have not used my bonus action yet, so I'm going to spin around and use it, and then she's going to just spin around the backside and just uh, whip out a dagger and just shank her in the back. So what does that look like? What does taking down the hag look like? Uh, it is uh, just literally just her jumping on the hag's back and just like stomping her to the ground as she pulls the dagger out. And as you all you see... You go, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she made it so easy. I changed my mind. She's my favorite butler now. Okay. Uh, Blake, since you didn't get a chance to actually do anything to the hag, what is your parting shot, or do you want to do anything? So the hag down on the ground. She's been taking out. Yes. yes. Maybe later this afternoon, I will tell you all the story of how I single-handedly want to hag. <laughs> I love it. Wow. So with the hag vanquished, you see the room light even more because her malevolent presence has lifted whatever curse was on this room. And with her death, it is gone. And you see the cauldron that was bubbling actually shrink down to a manageable size for someone to pick up and carry. And you, there's a lid, you can take it with you. 
And this has to be the cauldron of plenty. Now, you can take it with you, you could leave it here, but you do have at least one thought out fisherman you can take back. You could try to with you, look for a boat, but at the very least, you have vanquished this hag. And with the plenty in hand, you have effectively saved East Haven and getting you back to shore is uh, where we're going to wrap up because we've only got a wee bit of time. But I would like to know what each of you do when you return to the captain to show the whatever trophy you took from the hag, if you won, this mystic cauldron of plenty and the fisher boat either frozen or thawed out. Uh, let's start with Christina and go around. How do you go to the captain, Victorious? Take the side personally, just for a moment, and regale her with the story of how I used my beautiful rapier to the hag, how I fought valiantly, and the others did believe that I'm entitled to at least 75% of the table. <laughs> <laughs> the captain just laughs. Well, let me talk to the rest of your companions, and, and you will get paid, don't worry. Oh, well, that won't be Yo. necessary. I'll be handling all this. Ah, uh, I've met your kind before. I didn't get to be captain by being foolish. So, go in and have a seat. Make some, make sure that you have some food. And everyone will be paid all at the same time. The captain's got your number, Blake. <laughs> Um, and also, if you don't mind, Christina in chat, someone wants to know what Blake looks like so they can draw her. Uh, Gil, how do you claim your, your earnings? Uh, I tell almost the exact same story as Blake. Okay. All right. Uh, the captain too is not going to give any one of you all the gold, just so you know. The captain is not foolish. Fine. Fine. Met it's worth a try. Yes, the captain is like, no, no. Uh, the captain's very interested in what Gazzini is doing. Uh, Gazzini, uh, how do you re regale the captain? So, first things first, I apologize, but I don't. Um, as we were getting, well, firstly, as after we killed the, well, we, uh, Mermot killed the, um, uh, the hag once everybody was, you know, not really looking and, you know, doing their own thing, preparing to leave, I would have used my blade one last time to cut off a piece of those cape. Uh, okay. And then I would have used that as I would have decapitated the hag and taken her head, wrapped it in that fabric. Um, and then once we got back, and if Gil said anything, he would have just stared at her, like, try me, try and just stared at him, try me. Uh, but, uh, once uh, we got back to the captain, he would have set the head on the table. This is mine. My lord wants this. I do not care about your money, but the job is done. Well, do you want the money or shall I give it to someone else? Give it to anyone but Blake and Gil. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. All right. Hair. <laughs> uh, Mermot. How how do you claim your your winnings? Mermot comes in holding the cauldron, looking very ill, and you see that <laughs> there is grits like dripping down the side of this cauldron, and she just reluctantly hands it over and says, "Here, you can have this now. I'm I can't I can't anymore." And she just runs to the uh, to the nearest room, bathroom and just pee. All right, and uh, in the interest of time. What do you do? Uh, oh my god, I forgot your character name, Lobiz. <laughs> How do you claim uh, your Lobiz winnings? just trying to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lobiz shows up and. Um, well, I I did not get a trophy. I, I tried to take the hag's legs because I saw uh, Gazzini taking the head, but that felt weird. So uh, here are some toenails to prove that I did it. Um, <laughs> And the captain just was like, uh, uh, no. 
No? I'm good. Okay. I uh, believe you. Oh, so good. the hag's head, we're good. You, Perfect. You you keep those as a trophy. I did, but, not, but who wants toenails? I thought you wanted toenails. Yeah. No, okay, never mind. No, uh, just, no. <laughs> Have it, go inside. I, I will I will be with you all shortly. And you, our fine tiefling friend, Shaka, now that you've vanquished this hag, um, how can I help you get back to the rivals? Um, just give me money for a ship and make sure to tell as many people as you can that uh, rivals ain't here to play. All right. Um, I think that that is more than doable. And with that, the cauldron has been fun. Our players have hopefully had fun and you all watching have had fun. And the captain is going to pay everyone fairly. And <laughs> and since Cazini didn't want his share, the captain's just going to keep it. More gold in her pocket. <laughs> but uh, we've been, we ran a kind of shortened version of the Cauldron Caper, which you can find now in the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, which is available now. You can buy it at your local store, online, and also digitally at D&D Beyond. So to sign off, everyone, quickly, who are you and uh, where can they find you online? Starting uh, with Christina, and then we'll work our way back to me. My name is Christina Ariel, K-R-Y-S-T-I-N-A-A-R-I-E-L-L-E. You can find me on Christina Ariel, K-R-Y-S-T-I-N-A-A-R-I-E-L-L-E. You can find me on Alliance on LFM Network, and you can find me on Wednesdays on Dimension 20. Drop at Barbarella Sprilla Ganglin on Pirates of Leviathan. And you can come to the show with Tanya and Into the Motherland starting October 4th. Yep. Do the stuff. Bye. <laughs> TK. What up, you boy TK? <laughs> it's me, TK. Uh, spooky stories on the internet. If you like re reading spooky stories, then you can find them at my website, tkjwrites.com, or you can follow me on Twitter, TK Joins the Fray. Um, on Saturdays, I do Spooky Slumber Party. I'm um, one of the members of Indoor Recess Crew, and uh, I do a lot of spooky games, and I'm bad at them. And you can come and laugh at me or don't, whatever. I'm not your dad. On Tuesday nights, I'm the DM for Mythic Odysseys of Theros uh, over on the uh, this channel, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to be gone for the next two weeks, but then we're going to come back with season two. It's going to be ridiculous and a disaster, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Whatever. Yes. And uh, Sloney. Hi, I'm Sloney Bailey uh, at Mistress First on Twitter and Twitch. And you can find me hanging with the Indoor Recess crew on Tuesdays with playing Mythic Odysseys of Theros. Also DMing for the Plot Hunters uh, when you can find us on twitch.tv slash plot hunters every Saturday at 5 p.m. Masood. Masood. Okay. Uh, awesome. Oh. Hey guys, hey, I'm Masood. You can find me on the, yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Maroodboy, M-A-H-R-U-D-E-B-O-I. Um, you can also see me on Tuesday nights well, along with the rest of the Indoor Recess kids uh, playing Mythic Odysseys of Theros. We're currently on break right now, so we won't be uh, there this Tuesday. But if you go to our channel, Indoor Recess Crew, you can come watch Twilight with us. Uh, we're doing a watch part of Twilight. I've never <gasps> seen it and I don't know what to expect. But come in with that miracle uh, with us. Uh, you can also see me on Sundays with Rivals of Waterdeep. Um, this Sunday, we're going to be uh, doing another episode of Rivals on Bikes, sponsored by Blue Microphones, um, where I run as a DM for our lovely spoopy campaign in the upstate town of Corrington. And uh, we'll also be doing another, we've got a double header for Rivals on Sunday, um, doing a, one for the uh, PAX Online show. It's going to be great. It's going to be a good time. Tanya <laughs> hopping in the seat again as a DM for that. Uh, but they'll tell you more about that when it's their outro. Uh, Sharif. Hey, uh, I'm Sharif. You can find my stuff at SharifJackson.com. S-H-A-R-E-E-F Jackson.com. Also Sharif Jackson on all social networks. Um, and I'm part of Rivals Waterdeep, so you can check me um, you know, every, uh, every Sunday. Um, and I love playing with this group, and I love playing with the guests that we had uh, today. So thank you, everybody. 
And uh, I was your DM for the shenanigans uh, in Icewind Dale, Tanya DePass. You can find me at Cypher Tier. It's under my camera. Uh, so I, I do way too much, actually. Tomorrow, tomorrow Saturday. Uh, normally on Saturdays, I do Dungeon Crossing, where I teach people to play D&D, but in Animal Crossing, with Gary Witta, Shannon Woodward, Brian Gray, and Adam Nickerson. 10 a.m. Pacific on my channel and Gary Widow with Squad Stream. Sunday, uh, Rivals on Bikes with Masood in the DM chair. And then a PAX Live show. So you're getting a lot of rivals this weekend. Please come out and hang out with us. And then uh, next week, I'll be back with Dragon Age over at the Wandering DMs channel. And like Christina said, October 4th, new RPG system, new players on my channel, Cypher of Tear. October 4th, uh, Sundays, 6, I'm sorry, 4 p.m., Pacific for 12 weeks in a row of fun Afrofuturist science fiction that we are building from the ground up to Twitch. So that has been our wacky adventure for the evening. One second, me. Oh, you didn't talk. <laughs> no. All this time, you didn't talk. Just real quick. No, no it's okay. It's, it's fine. Just real quick. Omega, Critical Bard. You can catch me everywhere at Critical Bard. Uh, most importantly, you can catch me here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific as I host the uh, What It Means to Be a Bard panel with Christina as one of my panelists and Kelly Butler, uh, Lauren Urban, and Eugenio Vargas. Uh, you can also catch me on my channel, uh, twitch.tv slash Critical Bard, every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern for Creature Collectors, which is the all new uh, D D uh, campaign run by Lily Sparks, inspired by Pokemon, Digimon, Ghostbusters, and a lot of other stuff. It's fun. That's me. Love you all. Bye. All right, we're out. <laughs> <laughs>